what is up guys welcome back and we are back for some more tutorials with car x and the reason that we're back for more tutorials with car x is that we seem to have a recurring problem with everybody that learns the game and that is the car just spins out so we want to try and address why the car just spins out and hopefully in this video we'll try and uh, go a bit further into the details on on how to avoid that and the best steps to learn simple practices again we're probably going to go back over the three steps in here maybe not in too much detail again but these i do believe are the fundamental like building blocks or the the initial steps that you will need to be able to control the car so in this video today we're mostly going to talk about why your car just spins out so let's just get straight into it Okay, so for this video, we're going to use the Infinity or Equator D or whichever, you know, whatever you want to call it, depending on what part of the world you're from. But everyone that knows me, if you've ever watched my live streams, I just use this car religiously. I really do think it's probably one of the nicest, if not the nicest cars to use. So I'm going to put the tune up that I use. I haven't changed this tune in forever. Like it's been this way since I first did it and released the video many, 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 many months ago. So we're just going to use this, um, obviously pause the video and pop the numbers in as you can. As you can see it's not a huge amount of power and this crucially is something that we need to talk about in the video is not to overdo your power, it, it just will not help you at all. It's like trying to ride a bike without training wheels the very first time. Um, so power is definitely important. And again as you'll see like another key feature of how I tune cars is the front brake bias down here very important for how I drive and, and the technique that I use and hopefully you guys will see that it's a, it's a nice uh, technique to adapt for yourself as well. Okay I've added in this video of James Dean drifting just purely for a visual demonstration of the effort that it takes to drive a drift car. What you want to understand here is that he's constantly steering, braking or accelerating in this case mostly accelerating because most of this track is an acceleration zone apart from the uh, D cell in the middle so not a lot of braking going on here but what you need to understand is the steering throttle all go hand in hand if you put too much throttle you're going to have to turn back into the drift or you know it just depends where you are on the track but just understand but by watching this video it's not going to just be a case of put the car into a slide and it does it for you that is certainly not the case with car x nor in real life as well so just bear that in mind so before we get started we're going to have to just address a quick problem with car x and that is the wheel controls like it for whatever reason when you uh, go to your advanced settings your game will always be set to keyboard even if you have an active wheel controller device whether that be a fanatec or whatever whatever so it's very important that you make sure that when you come in every time so until they fix it that you change the steering wheel and that will give you your steering wheel rotation, your force feedback, um, and also, which I don't, I haven't messed with any of these prediction stabilizing and smoothing, but I know other people have. But for the uh, purposes of this, I'm just going to show you. Obviously, make sure you change it to steering wheel as your controller type. Set your desired force feedback because it won't let you change that without it. And uh, yeah. Just to make sure every time you come in and out of the game. I don't know why it's like this, but it is. So just make sure you do that. And also, what you tend to find when you change it to steering wheel. I don't know if it will say it again. Yes, it does. It will say you should calibrate your steering wheel axis. Which I will just demonstrate very quickly now as well. So, to calibrate your steering wheel. Again, down at the bottom. You want to hit calibration. Start calibration. And then just turn your wheel all the way one side. All the way back the other side, of course, I don't have my camera on to show you, but it's very simple. Down at the bottom again, hit stop calibration, and you're done. Um, and again, unfortunately, until they fix the like the issue with it saving, you might have to do this every time. Although I will admit, I constantly get on the game and don't change it, and the wheel performs very well. Like it just it doesn't feel any different, but you will not be able to make changes to your feedback or any of those. Uh, you know smoothing or anything without changing it back over to wheel okay so in this video here i have purposefully spun the car out a few times by over accelerating and not being gentle with the throttle which i believe is going to be like the main cause of most people's issues if you don't take into account like cars having too much horsepower 
or not the correct suspension setup for amateurs because that will make a huge difference as well. This is why I gave you the tune at the beginning so you can practice in a car that I know to be very, very forgiving and very easy to drift once you get the hang of the, the fundamentals. So as you can see in this video, I'm just putting my foot right down to the floor and the car, of course, is just going to over rotate because there's no real control there. It's just all accelerator and no uh, fine balance as such. Moving into the next clip now, what I want you to pay attention to here is the initiation, which is a small clutch kick followed obviously by the accelerator. But once the car is sideways, I back off the accelerator to about half and hold it there. And this is something going back to one of the previous beginner lessons of just initiating a drift, holding it very slightly and then catching the car just for a moment. But what you want to do is once you've got your throttle on halfway, that's the, that's the start of your drift and you want to leave it there and start to gently increase power if you need it. And at the same time, you should be turning into or out of your drift, depending on how uh, vigorous your clutch kick was to start the drift, to control the slide itself. Let's, uh, let's break it down into segments and just see how we can better understand it. So in the breakdown, the first part, of course, is the small clutch kick. Once you've done your small clutch kick, you want to obviously go for full throttle whilst you let off the clutch. But as soon as you let off the clutch, bring the throttle back down to about half, maybe just a little less. And then get ready to increase the power while steering into or out of your drift, depending on how you set your drift up. The whole point of this video was to try and help you guys from stopping spinning out and I hope that the last sort of minute or so of the video really kind of breaks down what you need to do to stop that happening. If and when you're comfortable with the car not spinning out, if you can initiate a drift and, and get going, then you want to move into the next or the, should I say the previous lessons from the original video because I'm sure a lot of you were getting stuck like you couldn't do the big long drifts or the figure of eights or whatever because you just couldn't get the car to go into a drift and stay there so with that in mind hopefully you guys are at the point now where you can kick the car out into a drift you don't even have to clutch kick it if you're confident with just you know using the throttle and then lifting off the throttle once the car's sideways but either which way if you are confident with getting the car into a drift you're definitely ready to go and practice some of the other techniques like big long open drifts as you can see here in the video playing or figure of eights, or whatever it is else that you want to try and do. But it's important to understand that the, the first part, the part that you fell down on, if you're confident with it now, you can definitely move on to practice the harder techniques. So with that in mind, it's time to end the video. In the background playing is just me doing some figure of eights. This is another, uh, another technique from the original video and I can't stress enough guys, go back if you're still struggling with the basic techniques of transitioning or holding the drift, practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the easier it will become. Build that muscle memory guys, alright? If you've got any questions, feel free to blow up the comment section. Hit the like button if it's helped you. Hit the dislike button if you think this is all crap. I'm totally up for suggestions if you want to drop suggestions in the uh, comment section. There is also the CarX Wheel Community page run by myself and some good friends of mine. Everybody in there super helpful. We'll try and get you help as much as we can do. I will leave the link for that in the description below as well. Until next time guys, it's been a pleasure. Happy sliding. We'll see you on track.